Lake Michigan's great and all, but I could just stay here for a little while. Hey, so it is great to um, celebrate the sacrament of baptism. So here at Grace Community Church, we believe that we, we believe that baptism does not save you. You don't need to be baptized to be a follower of Jesus Christ. But baptism is like a wedding ring, and it's great that I'm not wearing my wedding ring right now because my finger got too fat. But if I was wearing a wedding ring, I'd hold it up and say, right, that the, the ring doesn't make me married. But it's a sign that I am married, right? And so in the same way, baptism doesn't save you, but we believe that baptism is God's sign that you are declaring to the world you are a Christian. We see that in the book of Acts chapter 7. The Ethiopian eunuch surrenders his life to Christ. He says, I want to be baptized. And here at Grace, we believe that that baptism is something for those who have already put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. We, Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded for you. And so we believe that this Jesus' teaching, that discipleship comes first and that baptism comes second. You become a disciple, a regenerated follower of Jesus Christ, and then you are baptized showing forth that. So pretty excited here. I think we've got eight people we're going to baptize this morning. I'm going to start out baptizing um, Isaac and Sam, and I want to invite Isaac and Sam's life group up to just kind of find a way to like hang out around the water without falling in. Um, otherwise, they'll get crowded pretty quick. You ever see the, the, the YouTube of the kid that jumps in the baptismal? He does a cannonball. Thankful you guys. You guys, I appreciate you. You didn't do that this morning. And I, I appreciate, so I'm going to embarrass them publicly. I really appreciate this life group in particular because I know they take it very seriously to try in the midst of their life group to create a community of faith where they are training their children up in the way they should go and pointing them to the love of Jesus Christ and supporting one another like one big extended family. And that is very cool. So it's good to have them up here. You ready? Okay, man. Rock it out. Hello, my name is Sam Botsko. I am 11 years old and have been going to this church since first grade. About three months ago, I saw the Holy Spirit change my life. I began to think about things differently, like God's endless love for us and everyone that ever lived. God even loved Osama bin Laden, though Osama bin Laden didn't love God. I began to think of how many idols I have raised up and how the Holy Spirit has not only showed me that this is wrong, but that God can use the things that we love to do to bring glory to his name. For instance, I know that something that I love to do is soccer. Then I began to think of ways that God could use me to bring glory to his name in soccer. I would like to get baptized to show that this inward change has reached the outside. I want to publicly show that change too. So you put your faith and trust in Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Upon your profession of faith, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Isaac Moose. I am growing up in a Christian home, and I am very blessed to have Christian parents. I go to a church, boys club, and a Christian school, but that does not make me a Christian. When I went to church, I never took notes, never followed along in, in, never followed along in my Bible, and never really even paid atten- any attention to the sermon. A few months ago in Boys Club, Mr. Bosch was the speaker, and he talked about being a follower or a fan. He explained that a fan is someone who turns their back, and a follower is someone who believes and never turns their back. That really struck me, and I talked to my mom and told her that I was a sinner in need of Jesus as my Savior. That night, I prayed to God to forgive my sins, and help me to be a follower of Christ. So today I am getting baptized to show that Jesus is my savior and I want to be a follower and not just a fan. So you're gonna pay attention to the sermons now, right? Isaac, do you trust in Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Upon your profession of faith, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, 
Madison Audible to ask me to pray right after. Okay. Dear Lord, we pray for Sam and for Isaac. We pray for all the young people um, growing up in this church. I pray that the Holy Spirit would grab a hold of their hearts, soften their hearts to the gospel, and that they would grab hold, and that they would have the courage to stand up in front and profess their faith, um, and that they would be followers and not just fans. And I pray that their, their lives beyond an event like baptism would show that they were followers and not fans, that they would follow Christ with their whole heart and soul and mind and strength, and that we, their families and their life groups and the church as a whole, as a whole body, would encourage them and challenge them as they grow in their walk with Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And we've got Jared and Molly Liddy. Getting baptized together as a married couple. This is pretty epic. You know, it's a lot warmer than Lake Michigan. Yeah, yeah, that's warm. No, you come in and get like we can we can make room. So can you talk and I talk and then you dunk him and then dunk me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can do it that way. Good morning. For those who don't know me, my name is Jared Liddy. I grew up in a Christian home and accepted Jesus as my personal savior at, the age, at an early age. I grew up in this church, but did not fully embrace my faith as my own until the last 10 years or so. Even then, I have strayed from God as my walk with Christ has been stagnant at times, and I've struggled to grow into the godly man that I desire to be. But thankfully, God has shown me much grace and persistence in working in my heart and drawing me closer to him. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I want my family, friends, and the world to recognize that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I belong wholeheartedly to him. I'm ready and excited to follow God's command to be baptized, making a public profession of faith, an outward representation of an inward transformation that I pray will lead to continued growth in my walk and relationship with Christ in a life that glorifies him. I was told not to look up because that will help me not cry, so we'll see. I know there's a lot of people out there. <laughs> My name is Molly Liddy, and I was blessed beyond words to marry into the Liddy family. Here I go. <laughs> I grew up in Massachusetts and went to church as a toddler. I remember some of the Bible songs and being taught that Jesus turned water into wine, or in our case, grape juice. But I came from a split family, and every other weekend, my sister and I were with my father 45 minutes away. As we got a little older, Church was not a priority over sleeping at friends' houses, and then when I was in second grade, we moved to a different town. By then, we basically only went to church on special occasions. By the time I was moving away for college, I had strayed so far, I didn't even know who Jesus was. But God was working in my heart from the beginning. In college, I had heard about a Katrina, Hurricane Katrina relief trip down to New Orleans, and I wanted to go and help. I learned that this trip was being set up by InterVarsity, an, in, an on-campus Christian organization. I still decided to go. Before the trip, there were a few meetings that incorporated a small Bible study and prayer. Then during the trip, even more Bible studies, prayers, and examples of who Jesus Christ was and is in the lives of Christians. After the trip, I just continued to meet with the InterVarsity group on my campus. I had enjoyed their fellowship, and I can still only explain my willingness to go every week as God working in my heart. I was eventually paired with a mentor, Diane. I can't really explain why I was open to learning about God in such an intimate setting, but before I knew it, we were at our first meeting, and that was the day I accepted Jesus into my heart. Today, I make a public profession of my faith and trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Good job. Thanks. 
Jed, are you trusting in Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. By your profession of faith, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There we go. So it's a pleasure this morning to uh, have Ryan Brody come in, and as his family comes up, he's going to begin sharing his testimony. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, I'm Ryan. I grew up in this church. Uh, I've been coming here since as long as I can remember, uh, and I grew up in a Christian home as well. So you know, I always knew God existed, but that's about the extent of my relation with Christianity, and it stayed that way until about sixth grade um in the spring of sixth grade my parents divorced and you know as a middle schooler it's kind of a uh, devastating event uh, rocked my world really and did uh really tested what i knew of god at that time uh, the main question in my mind was why would a benevolent father like him allow this to happen so i decided to pray about it and i prayed that he would reveal his existence to me and you know show me why he was doing this and uh I began to realize that divorce was just a trial to, you know, strengthen my faith. And so at that point, I began to truly believe that he existed. Um, and it stayed that way until eighth grade, um, sixth or eighth grade. I really struggled with uh, various types of sin and I didn't really have anyone to talk to about it. Um, then eighth grade, I started meeting with Jeff Henderson, my uh, sixth grade English teacher. And we just talked about what was going on in my life, uh, the sin I was struggling with, how to cope with it. And then one of these meetings in, I wanna say May of eighth grade, he ended up praying for me to be saved uh, by Jesus. And I could almost physically feel him enter my heart. And it was an amazing feeling. Um, so I'd say that's the point where I was truly saved. Um, sorry. <clears throat> so eighth grade, uh, I entered high school and I was a Christian, I was saved, but I wasn't really doing anything. I wasn't an active Christian. And uh, that continued on until the beginning of my sophomore year. Um, my father, at the beginning of sophomore year, uh, disowned me and my sisters. And that was, uh, that was horrible. It was a massive uh, trial for me in terms of faith. Came back to the same question of why would God allow this to happen? And so I prayed and I continued praying for quite some time, just asking why he would allow this to happen. And uh, eventually the answer came to me that it was a way for him to strengthen my faith. And it, it worked. 
um, through my father disowning me, I, uh, I give it closer to my true father. And uh, at that point, I was thinking about being baptized, but I still didn't feel like I was ready. I guess I thought baptism was sort of a second step, so to speak, uh, something along the lines of, well, I've been saved, but I'm really good enough to be baptized. And uh, after talking through it with Kayone here, uh, I realized that baptism is just a uh, public declaration of a private confession. And so with that knowledge, I've uh, come here today to be baptized and make that public declaration. Ryan, have you trusted in Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Then it is based upon that good confession that I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What a powerful testimony of God's transforming work, amen. Does Asen Martinez, if uh, his family and friends and life group would come up, um, for those who are wanting to witness and testify to him um, of his testimony in Christ. Now is the time. You got a lot of people with you, bro. Why don't you go ahead and tell us your testimony, Ace? Hello, my name is Ace Martinez. Many of you may not know me, but you probably know my mom, Jessica. Um, as I grew up, I always knew I wanted, I always knew God was real, but I didn't really follow what he wanted me to do or do it right. I grew up pretty in a pretty unstable household throughout a big portion of my life. My family, such as my mom and dad, were not living the Christian life and were struggling with a lot of things. But the more I grew up, the more my family started to follow Christ and grow in Christ. And I wanted to follow, I was just doubting God and wondering if he was really real and could actually be a loving, providing God. The more I exposed, the more I was exposed to God, the more I felt the urge to be saved. I can't remember the exact day I was saved, but I believe I was, it was a few weeks after my biological dad, Tom, passed away. As I first start, started life as a believer, like anyone else, I was struggling with my sins, but I knew through the Lord I could be forgiven and work through these sins and get better with them. As my Christian life went on, my dad, Stephen, passed away. And at that point, I was kind of mad at God and questioned why he would take two fathers away from me in a single year. But I knew, still, very deep down, God had a purpose for this in my life and it would help me on my way in many ways. After this happened, I wanted to go to church most of the time. And I felt the need to help others and listen to what God wants me to do. And even though I will struggle, I want to show that I'm God and I know he does everything for his glory. That is why I'm here today getting baptized. Amen. All right, Asen. Do you trust in Christ, in Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Then it is based upon that good confession that I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> half-brother comes up.
You might know you might know my family. We sit one row from the front. I live with my mom and four brothers. I go to Jenison High School and like to spend the majority of my time hanging with friends and family. I decided to get baptized today because of my love and passion for Jesus Christ and what he did for me on the cross. During one of my regular competitions for marching band at around 10.30 a.m., I was hit with a question that I had been thinking about days before. Am I going to heaven? I had been battling this question ever since one night in boys club where Mr. Campbell asked us if we knew we were saved or not. So I answered that question with a prayer. God, I realize I'm not perfect, but you are Jesus. I need you in my life to guide me through every choice I take, every step I take. I need you, Lord, I submit my life to you. And at that moment, I felt a physical burst of warmness expand through my heart and throughout my body. After that, I was on a, what I felt as a spiritual high until I was hit with my first big obstacle, my father passing away. A lot of people say how they got mad at God oh, when a loved one has passed, but I wouldn't say I was mad at him, but I spent a lot of time questioning God and my faith. But once school started up again and I started getting involved with solid ground, that's when I met some of my friends that helped me through, helped me, helped guide me through my struggles daily. I came here today sitting at the feet of Christ to claim that I have been cleansed by him of all my sins. Jeremiah, have you trusted in Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. And it is based upon that good confession that I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm sure you're looking forward to celebrating with these two young men later on this afternoon. The next young man I'd like to invite up is Alex Dominguez, and uh, if his life group of the Potter family would like to come forward at this time, go ahead and make your way toward the stage. I was, I was born December 23, 1999, into a home with a mother who, for as long as I could remember, has taught me about Jesus and has tried to show me the love of Christ through her own life and has surrounded me with a family who has the same goals. I grew up going to church and have gone to Christian school since kindergarten. I have been surrounded by Christianity for a majority of my life. However, even with all of this Christian influence, I still inwardly hated going to church and thought that it was a boring waste of time. I also found that I did not like most of the Christians that were in my life either. I thought that they were some of the meanest and some of the most miserable looking people that I had ever met. Uh, <laughs> in about eighth grade, I started to pray to God to save me. These prayers originated more out of a fear of hell than out of anything else. However, these prayers did start a time in my life where I truly would start to look to God for help and salvation. I prayed these prayers countless times and struggled, but I struggled for a long time to actually be convinced that I was saved because I still struggled with sins. However, I now am fully convinced that I have been saved through the work of Jesus on the cross and I have, and others have noticed, that there has been a 
complete change in my desires. And I love going to church. I love the people of God. I love being around the people of God. I love the Bible. God has taken me from hating him and everything that has to do with him to loving all of it. I have now decided to stop pushing off being baptized. I, wanted to, I want to make a public profession of my faith by obeying the command that Jesus has given in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Alex, have you trusted in Christ and Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes. And it's based upon that good confession that I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's stand as we will be dismissed by singing our own testimony. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. We are a child of God. Yes, we are. Let's sing together. <laughs>